As a postdoc, um, I worked a lot on understanding the, how alcohol affected the cerebellum. And as we were working on that, the field started to understand that the cerebellum was doing a little more than what we had thought it was doing historically. So it's well known that this part of the brain is really important for balance, coordination, and motor control. But recently, uh, myself and, and other labs have identified these interactions between the cerebellum and many non-motor brain areas, meaning the cerebellum might be important for emotion, cognitive processing, language processing, and so on. And clinical literature kind of in parallel had identified that uh, the cerebellum actually expresses a lot of genes that are linked to autism. The overall goal of this project is to try to understand how and whether the cerebellum is actually an important part of what gets disrupted in autism and other like neurodevelopmental disorders. One of the, the major challenges with autism research is that there are so many genes associated with autism that considered to be risk factors, mutations or deletions in these genes. Um, and there's over a hundred. And it's, it's difficult for the field to try to understand where they all kind of come together and then what processes or functions they all impinge on to create the commonalities across the spectrum. Um, and so that's, that is one of the biggest challenges is um, picking all those little pieces apart. Our overarching goal is to understand first whether an autism-like perturbation of the cerebellum or autism-like change within the cerebellum is, could potentially change, the, change an organism's behavior in a way that would be in line with what we would see in a clinical population of autism. And so assuming we, we see this change uh, that's due to a disruption of how the cerebellum functions, the next step uh, within our, our study is to drill down and really try to identify the specific changes that occur at a, a cellular level. Because if we can do that, we think we might have a shot at identifying new therapeutic targets. A lot of times when young investigators like myself leave our postdoc and begin our new uh, independent research program, many times we want to go a new direction. Um, oftentimes this is a direction or a, a study that we've been thinking about for years in our training, but now we really we have the freedom to go explore that. It's important that new investigators can compete with all the other investigators out there. When you come out of your training right off, if you're trying to compete with somebody who's had NIH funding for 20 years, you're just not gonna be competitive. So the new investigator grant allows those, those people who come right out of their postdoc and out of their training to get into the NIH system and compete on a level that will allow them to be successful. Just like almost everyone probably, I know someone who either has or has been affected by uh, autism, directly or indirectly. Ben is a great scientist. He, he brings a lot of energy to the program. He's always looking for new collaborations. He works really well with others, and he has re-energized the pharmacology department. My name is Ben Richardson. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Pharmacology here at SIU School of Medicine.